Man, doesn't he look good today? He's a little dirty, but he sure is muscled up. My boy. So, we got something pretty neat. Um, I have never seen a draft horse show advertised in our area until we got him. Now, there has been some draft horse pulls, uh, like where they're competing on who can pull the most weight. But just down the road today, this is the first annual draft horse show in Lebanon. Um, I didn't have time to train him for the discipline. Plus, I don't even know what the disciplines are and what the judging criteria is. So I'm just going to go, or the whole family's going to load up and go, and we're going to network, meet some people. Uh, there's a Clydesdale farm in Springfield. I hope they show up. I want to meet them. We'll pass out some business cards, uh, talk about Oliver a little, and we're going to learn what the show is all about so that next year I can have him trained up to compete in it. Yeah. You'd be a good show horse, wouldn't you? You're beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. He's got a really good muscle tone and everything, and his confirmation is good, so I'm really looking forward to trying to figure out what we can do with him and, and maybe show him next year. Um, but I bet we learn a lot today, and hopefully there'll be some vendors. Maybe we can even think about maybe getting him a head stall today so I can start training him. Right now, he's in the pasture. We got Lakota in the pasture with him. Hi, Lakota. Dry lot, not a pasture. Yeah, really. dry lot. <laughs> but they, it's connected to the pasture when we want to let him out. But, and then Hello, his mama buddy. Soiks. He's very gentle with the baby horse and lets the baby horse play with him. Man, look how big he is right here. Good Lord, buddy. So let's go watch the show and see what we can figure out. It's only about a 45 minute drive and we arrived at least two hours early, but we're pleased to see that there was already a lot of horses there and a lot of horse trailers. The Raptor S Arena is a really nice facility and it had this really good little tech shop in it, but no draft size equipment. When the show started, the first class was the two horse hitch team class. And that's what you're seeing here. So I asked the judge at one point what he was looking for on the criteria of each class. And he said he likes to see the horses in unison. He likes to see them calm, easy headsets with a high knee in the front and kind of uh, trying to trot in unison and also being well in control when they ask for the walk. All right, bring your horses to a trot. One more time to a trot. This class is comprised of three Belgian teams and one Percheron team. The two darker Belgian teams are what they call reds, and the lighter colored one is what they call blondes. Eva, we're going to start to line up with you on this. In each class at the lineup, the horses were asked to back up a few paces and then pull forward. And in some classes, they were asked to swing the load left and right, or G and haw, as the operators would say. And um, 
hopefully, I think the ideal situation would be the handler or driver would be able to do it mostly with voice commands. And that's kind of what the judge was looking for, is the horses that were the most well-trained and well-behaved. Fourth place goes to Leaky Belgian from Hardin, Missouri, driven by Abby Leaky. Give Abby a hand. Good job, Abby. In third place from Lynchburg, Missouri, goes to Central Valley Perkins, driven by Ken Pippetel. Thank you for coming down to Ken. So this was my favorite class, mostly because it's the only one that I can see myself being able to afford to enter. These little carts that they're using here are um, more complicated than what, you, what they may appear. What they are good for is they have a trailer hitch behind them so they can pull up to any implement and hook onto it and pull it. So say you had a wag like a hay wagon you wanted to pull, you would take this and hook your hay wagon to it and then the team could pull it. Or say you had a piece of equipment stuck, you could use this rig kind of as an all-purpose tractor to go with your horses. Since I've seen this, I've been looking up how to build one for a single horse hitch, and all I need is a big caster wheel to go in front, and then I can put shafts on it and use it for Oliver. So I'm going to be in the process of building one of these right away and starting to train him in this discipline, and I think he's going to be really good at it. Ideally, the driver would have such control over his team that the inside wheel of the turn could right. stay in its same Remain spot, the say stationary, as the team wheeled around it. Farm teams will need to be a little bit more agile and able to do pretty significant maneuvering to be able to get in place to haul logs and get through logging yards and work in the fields and to be precise enough to work harrowing through the crops without getting out of their road. If you're interested in more of how that works, you should check out one of my favorite YouTube channels, Working Horses with Jim, and make sure you put in the comments and point out this video to him maybe he'll find me and Oliver and he and I can hook up someday and I can learn from a real expert
here the team was asked to back up and then swing all the way 90 degrees left and then back 180 degrees to the right and then pull back up into its original spot. This guy got a lot of flack for bringing mules to a draft horse show, but it was just really nice of him to show up and support the new event, make sure there was teams to compete. And uh, he handled everything well, and he had a really good sense of humor. The mules were a little bit more agitated than the horses, but that's probably just a mule for you. I am not a big fan of mules because I have trained or started probably between 100 and 200 horses and I've only broken a couple bones in that process. I've trained or started five mules and I've broke six bones. So I'm out on the mules. I'm sticking with my fox trotter and my one tied still. Thank you guys for coming. Second place is gonna go to the best looking team of horses, Jacob Kennedy, with his pair of mules. And first place, So as the announcer said, there's a Shire Hitch in this class, which is the ones that look like Clydesdales but are black with the white feet. Those are a draft breed called Shires. This black t Hitch that's going past us now are black Pertrons. Then the ones that look like Oliver are, of course, the Clydesdales. And those are the people from Springfield that I was hoping to meet. However, um, they were just either too busy or weren't too interested in making new friends that day so i was not able to introduce myself so that's a missed opportunity there i'm sure i could have learned a lot from them One of the things I learned at this show was that in a four-horse hitch like this, it's only the back team or the wheel team that is responsible for being able to stop the load. There is no stopping power on the front two horses. Next up, Jamie Farrell and Kim Scott. Drive number 22, Jamie Farrell. Next up, Jamie Farrell and Kim Scott. Right here in front of our ring man. 
Just be gentle, just line up the side. And then the feet of front, in this edge, is called the lean feet. And they're kind of like... Uh, Ooh, it's getting dusty. Emergency power. Ideally, they're supposed to have a loose tug. Like you can see there, Lucas is pulling in his front seat in perfect position. But they're there if you need them. All the cargo up the hill or something like that. Deep mud. I was very surprised how difficult it was for these hitches to back up. Even the teams had a lot of trouble backing up and the judge only asked them to go about three feet backwards. I would have expected them to be able to back up through cones and in an S pattern, uh, but it may just be a quite a bit more difficult than I had originally assumed. As you've probably gathered, this is the same class. However, they broke it up into three groups because having six hitches of horses going in this small arena at the same time would not be the safest thing. However, the all six hitches are being judged against the same standard and will be placed um, from first to sixth as if they were in there at the same time. These horses must be very predispositioned to trot because they did not walk very much and they also never asked for a canner. Another little bit of a surprise. Um, of course, you know, I readily admit I'm ignorant of what is happening here and this was my first time at one of these shows. Thank 
There was a fun little pony class, and the footing was so deep that the tires of these skinny bicycle tires were sinking in, and the littlest pony had a hard time pulling that load. And now was the unicorn class. Unicorn class is two horses in the back, the wheel horses, with one lead horse up front. They say it's the most Thank difficult or the most dangerous um, team to drive because the shaft can get up underneath the unicorn horse. As you've gathered by now, if you're one of the Homestead Horsemanship fans, I'm not very shy, and I, as soon as they asked for a volunteer, I jumped the fence to make sure I'd be the one cho chosen. I am also not above a shameless plug for the thousand or so plus people in attendance in the crowd. The man was a little bit surprised that somebody actually took him up on this. I guess when he's asked in the past, um, usually people are too shy or too scared to do it. When I got up there, he was asking me, you think you can do this? I said, oh yeah, I've got it. Don't worry about it. And then as I started going, um, I didn't really want to stop. So I started doing figure eights and well, making sure I uh, kind of got a feel for it if I was going to get the chance. And let me tell you, these horses were light. And what I mean by light, I mean the slightest um, pressure on the bit, the slightest ask, they responded. They were so well trained, especially the one up front. And that's why it was the leader, I assume. 
Um, very good team, and I'm very thankful for the opportunity to do this. I'm going to follow up with this guy. He gave me a business card, and I want to talk to him some more. Um, I could tell he'd be a, a wealth of knowledge to learn from. You probably won't be able to use that, but my camera quality sucks. Crazy. Yeah, I got the feel. No, it feels just like riding a horse. They're real light, fingertip control. Huh, really? It was pretty awesome. Yeah. I could also do this class with Oliver, however I don't have a cart. If anybody has one out there that they're not using and wants to donate it to the cause, let me know in the comments. As this class was also split for safety, at the end during the lineup they brought the other half of the class in so that the places could be called by the judge. So a judge had a tie in his mind between ho horses that were in the two separate groups of the class. So he's having a tiebreaker here where he has both of them do a trot off. And as biased as I am for Clydesdales, being on how I love Oliver, I've got to tell you, this horse here, this is a Belgian. Um, it, it was probably the finest animal on the showgrounds that day. It was so well trained, so fancy, and just going on and just a real specimen of a horse that I, in my mind, if I was the judge, that would be my pick. And I hate to pick against my Clydesdale, but there was just something very special about that horse. So let's see if the judge comes to the same conclusion as me. In fifth place goes to Ken Pimentel with Central Bertrand, driven by his daughter. Central Valley Perkins. Fourth place goes to Burkhouse Belgians from Falcon, Missouri. Driven by Eva Burkhouse. Third place goes to Adams and MT Belgians from Morrisburg, Missouri. Driven by Lawrence Adams. Second place. Goes to Soaring Eagle Farm, driven by Shelly Lewis with the Park Wednesday Five Sale. First place tonight goes to the Sorrow Belgian, driven by Abby Leakey of Leakey Belgian. Congratulations, Abby. Congratulations, Abby. That was a good class. No. <laughs> 
Drive for hire. This was the final class of the night, the six-up hitch class. That means that there's obviously uh, three teams of horses pulling one wagon. That's a lot of horsepower there. Everybody. we're back home we got Oliver out we didn't find him any tack or any vendors there but all we did find was some more motivation to get him trained and under harness I can't wait uh, getting to drive that team was pretty neat feeling there's so much power in these type of horses so 
I'm really looking forward to doing that. I'll have to break down and buy them a harness. And uh, let me know in the comments what you thought about the show. And thanks for watching. And hopefully next year we'll be in the show. And you guys can follow the whole training process and everything right here at Homestead Horsemanship. We'll talk to you later.